Apple is uh, doing the impossible, selling the MacBook Pro with eight gigs of RAM in 2023. And they're claiming that eight gigs on new Macs are more than the typical 16 gigs. And this makes it difficult to choose the right memory size for you. But don't you worry, by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how much unified memory you need. Let's start with a few bits of useful info. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Think of it as the short-term memory of your computer. It's super fast and holds the data your Mac needs right now or in the next few moments. RAM helps keep apps open in the background and do multitasking. RAM is where your Mac stores necessary files for that new Resident Evil game and so on. More RAM means your Mac can remember more things at once, which makes it faster and smoother in handling tasks. On Macs, with M-series chips, the RAM is a bit different from the rest of RAM types. The RAM is actually part of the same chip that has the CPU and GPU in it. This means that data transfer speeds are the fastest they could ever be. And that's why Apple also uses RAM as GPU memory. This design is super efficient and smart, but brings a couple of problems that appear when RAM runs out. So let's go over the specs now, starting with the M3 MacBook Pro, not M3 Pro, but just an M3. It has three RAM size options, 8, 16, or 24, and so does the M2 MacBook Air. So everything I say here applies to both of these, so 8 gigs. Manuel, you're right, especially if you're planning on doing something demanding. If your tasks revolve around watching Netflix, doing light Photoshop, browsing the web, or simple office work with no more than a couple of documents opened at the same time, then eight gigs will be enough for you. And gosh, eight gigs will be enough to even edit a simple video in Final Cut, but for anything more than that, you're gonna feel crippled. Eight gigs of RAM doesn't mean you get all eight gigs. Remember when I said that Apple uses RAM as GPU memory? Out of these 8 gigs, most of the time you will have only 2 to 3 gigs free. And this amount doesn't do very well in multitasking or keeping heavy apps loaded. Now let's make a quick detour and talk about this video sponsor, Wondershare Filmora. Filmora is a fantastic video editing tool from Wondershare and right now they're rolling out a version 13 update, which includes new AI features and upgrades to make one's editing experience more seamless and simpler. One of such features is the AI Copilot. It's basically an assistant to chat with that can answer any question and suggest a solution. It will explain how to do color grading, where to find specific tools, and how to edit your video. Very helpful if you are a complete noob in video editing. And I also like the new AI music generation feature. All I need to do is select the mood, duration, and number of tracks. And that's all. After the tracks are generated, I can drag any one on the timeline. If you are a beginner, generating your own music is much easier than finding one available for free online. And how can I forget about an essential tool for all YouTubers? thumbnail generator. When exporting a video, I can let AI pick a thumbnail style for me or create my own. It saves a ton of time. I will leave a link in the description for you, so be sure to check it out. If you're really tight on a budget and cannot spare more money on your MacBook and buy a RAM upgrade, I would say that there is a good reason to look for another MacBook. For example, if you're planning to buy the M2 MacBook Air, I'd say that it would be a wiser decision to go for the M1 Pro 14 inch that has 16 gigs. And if you're planning on buying the base M3 MacBook Pro, the M2 Pro machine will be much better with its 16 gigs of RAM. And this is our smooth subway into talking about 16 gigs. You can either do as I said and buy an older MacBook with more RAM or pay extra and get RAM upgrade. Both options are quite good, so it's up to you to decide what you want. But I would say that 16 gigs is the absolute minimum in 2023 and 2024. With with 16 gigs, you can comfortably run almost any application you can think of without a hitch. Do complex work like 3D rendering, edit 4K videos, and export thousands of photos. 16 gigs make multitasking faster and the laptop overall more responsive. Tell them about swap. About what? Swap. Oh. Pfft. Swap. To do any complex work, the MacBook with 8 gigs will need to use Swap, which means using the SSD as RAM. And this means more wear to the SSD, which is something you want to avoid, since the SSD is soldered to the motherboard. Replacing the Mac will be quite expensive, but there is one thing you can do now to prevent this from happening. Just to sub to the channel and like this video if you like what we're doing. This keeps us 
motivated. The owners of Macs with 16 gigs most likely will never encounter a swap simply because 16 gigs will be enough for everything. Of course, I don't mean super advanced 3D or editing 8K videos with tons of effects or anything like that. I'm talking about a fairly professional workload heavier than normal. If you really want to go harder on your laptop and your wallet, that's when it might start making sense to upgrade to 24 gigs of RAM. Technically, this is a very controversial upgrade mainly because the M3 chip doesn't really need that much RAM to spread its wings. And it is a $200 upgrade over 16 gigabytes, which brings the total price of a base 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro to $2,000. And for that kind of money, it makes much more sense to go straight for the M3 Pro, which costs just as much and has 18 gigs of RAM by default. So M3 Pro and its 18 gigs of RAM. I'd say that's a perfectly good amount of RAM for almost everyone. It's a little bit over those 16 gigs, thus a bit better. I'd say that for the most part, you don't need more than 18 gigs, unless you wanted a really complex work. Like I said, if you're a programmer and need to compile really big projects, or you work with 3D and need to render a ton of stuff, or you're a musician and need hundreds of tracks in one project, that's when it starts making sense to upgrade the M3 Pro to 36 gigabytes. But beware, this is a $400 upgrade, which is a lot of money. That's the iPhone SE right there. Oh, yeah. It's 30 bucks less than SE. Anyway, it doesn't matter. 36 gigs is definitely a lot for 90% of people. With that amount, you basically become almighty. Any app, any workflow, an amount of Chrome tabs, no limits, Hollywood level VFX, easy. Exporting 5,000 photos, not a problem. It's really hard to saturate RAM when you have so many gigabytes. And think about gaming. You'll be able to crank up the texture quality to the max and turn all the bells and whistles, but does it really make sense to pay for so much RAM on the M3 Pro? I'd say yes, but only if you know the you need it. And this RAM upgrade alone brings the price to $2,400. And if you're ready to spend that, it would make sense to pay extra for the full M3 Pro with more cores, which is 200 bucks. So the total price is $2,600 with a 14 inch and you get a laptop that can do everything. Minimal rendering times, almost no waiting for stuff to load. That's what you call progress. Remember when Macs used Intel chips and were slow as heck? Me neither. $2,600 is a lot, but what if we can up the price to $3,000 and still have 36 gigs of memory? That's right, M3 Max is in the house. M3 Max is a beast. And for it, I feel like 36 gigs of RAM is not enough. People buying Max chips know exactly what they need. And I find it unlikely for someone to buy M3 Max just for the sake of it. M3 Max gives a ton of room performance wise, but I think it really needs more RAM to show what it's got. 48 gigs would be nice. But unless you upgrade the chip to its best version, the only two options will be 36 and 96 gigabytes. And those 96 gigabytes, I cannot even fathom that much RAM. I can't think of a single situation when I might need that much. Maybe if I was doing the most demanding video editing, working with those huge 150 megapixels merged photos or developing AAA games, I feel like Apple has given that much RAM for two reasons, because they can and for a select few people who need that and to show pretty numbers at the event because realistically it's unlikely that you're ever gonna need more than 48 gigabytes but if you know that you need that ram you know what to do, 96 gigs are waiting. As I said before, to get 48 gigs, you'd have to spend $300 for an upgraded M3 Max, and this upgrade actually includes the RAM upgrade to 48 gigs. Apple giving away free RAM? Unbelievable. Those 48 gigs, like I already said, is kind of the best amount for the M3 Max. 48 gigs is enough for the most demanding workflows in gaming, and is much more than necessary for the 95% of buyers. And who cares? that the 14 inch MacBook starts costing three and a half grand. Only the poshest people will take $200 out of their pocket 
and go for 64 gigs, which is even better than 48. Do I even need to say how much of a pro you have to be to use all this RAM? Because from what I've seen and whom I've met, not so many people even use their Macs chip to its fullest. These chips are made to be used and abused, to work non-stop and earn money to pay for themselves. And I hope your job allows you to pay for all this because the next RAM size is 128 gigs. Just think about it, your MacBook can have as much RAM as the storage on the iPhone 15 Pro. It just blows my mind how powerful you can make the M3 MacBooks. You can take them from measly 8 gigs all the way to 128, aka 16 times more. That's just bonkers. No matter how much RAM you choose, remember one thing, you can't change it later. If you need more RAM, buy a new MacBook. And doing that actually can be harder than it seems. So a while back, we've made a video with the most popular Mac buying mistakes. So be sure to click here and check it out. Peace.